All right, Breaking Records Radio and the place to be, you know what it is, your host Maloney, and I got a special guest with me right now, and um, I don't even have the words to really describe how legendary this guy's brand is, <laughs> and we'll get to that all throughout this interview, um, but it's 100 miles, man, Gary in the place, how's it going, man? Peace and love, yo, I'm, I'm just here in the building, in, the, in our building, you know, uh, 2359 Queen Street East. Uh, the new flagship store for 100 Miles brand. We just celebrated 30 years in the game and uh, we decided to come back with a store rep in our city and uh, showing love to Canada at the same time. Oh man, well, the thing is 30 years, that's insane. Like a lot of people cannot say that they've withhold, held any business <laughs> for 30 years, let alone a hip hop clothing brand, which is like, you know, it's easy to, to be cool and phase out in that arena, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole story right there that has to, like, the longevity in itself is just impressive, but it's the brand itself that withholds it, right? So I want to talk a little bit about how you guys kind of even started, but like, so back, because being 30 years ago, the, the climate of things were way different, 91, yeah. 92, right? <laughs> Hip hop was way different. Yeah. Um, what was kind of like the climate in the city like at the time that made you even like, you know, want to start doing well, hip hop clothing. There was there wasn't much uh, or, or any at all representation in terms of urban clothing or hip hop clothing or um, cultural clothing in the early '90s, and so I kind of sang that void and said, you know what, like I I need clothing or I want to wear something that represents me and my culture and what 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 I'm into, and so. At the time, all forms of music I'm in tune to, but what I loved the most was hip hop, because it was just so um, political. It was uh, emotional. It was everything that music could give you. Love, right? And the the artists at that time were more um, natural and genuine with the the way that they uh, put out their their rhymes, and so it was just something that. You know, transpired into how could I fit into this culture, and the, the only way that I I saw, I couldn't rap, right? And, and I couldn't really. Did you try? Yeah, I tried. <laughs> of course, of course. And I couldn't be the best break dancer, so you know, I just kind of saw something that what I was always uh, in love with, and that was clothes. And you know, I I found the name Hundred Miles, and and ever since it's it's been part of what I call the culture now. You know what I mean? As opposed to just all these other clothing lines, right? Yeah, well, that and that's the thing. You have such deep roots in Toronto culture, just Toronto culture alone, but especially the hip-hop culture. Like, in hip-hop, you have a legacy that's deeper than just <laughs> just Toronto. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, in Toronto, yeah. you're, you're, you know, you're part of the culture, yeah. but in hip-hop, you're part of the culture, right? Yes, yes. Um, And it's crazy, like, and so... Like, was there there was was there a big hip hop scene in the city at the time that kind of had you like you know what I mean or or because the reason I ask kind of that is because I know like early on a lot of really that's something we'll get to but a lot of really big name American acts are rocking your shit right yeah <laughs> so like it almost seemed like out the gate you had your eyes set on like certain you know what I mean but uh, like was there what was kind of the like actual city like as far as hip hop goes at the time like the scene and stuff the scene was developing there was artists but they weren't getting the shine that the american artists were getting yeah and not, like they they were majority of the time the opening acts right to these american counterparts which are were the headliners yeah and so we came out in a time where there wasn't too many acts coming out of the city and the ones that were coming out you know they they, they were working very hard to create their their buzz like maestro um dream warriors <coughs> right like they 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 were creating their platforms right so uh hdv i remember like uh rumble and strong there's so many uh names that are, are not even mentioned anymore that they were part of the scene and and they were they were trying to push hip hop from toronto but it was a very uh very hard scene at the time, I'd say. Yeah. Difficult to break into. Yeah. 
and and I gotta salute Maestro, you know, for oh, being able to withhold withstand a legacy like that for so so oh, many years. You know what I mean? And that's it's very it's crazy to see what it's inspiring, you know. Mm -hmm. So big shout out to Maestro as well too. Yeah, most definitely. And um, so starting off then too, like I know you had the original street that was on Young Street. Obviously, mm -hmm. I was too young to ever witness it, but I've heard <laughs> many great stories about it. Uh, DJ Shortcut, I'm pretty sure, told me he met Nas off the Omatic tour because he caught him coming out of the 100 Miles store. He was down the street, right? We'll, we'll make a correction. He was at um, one of our our, com our competitors or rival brands at the time, and Nas was on on the streets, like on Young Street. So he probably just seen him and. I rolled up to him, but you know we we've been known for so many different artists to have rolled through our store and 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 built with us, and you know even meet a lot of our our clients or our our customer base and them, you know getting a chance to meet some of the artists that they've loved and and looked up to like Biggie and you know uh, Keith Murray, ODB, just name a few. <laughs> so wait a minute, so. All these guys actually came through the store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Mob Deep. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Yeah. Havoc and Prodigy, Rest in Peace Prodigy. Yeah. Biggie. Um, Fuji's. Yeah, a lot of them just roll through the P Rock Seal Smooth. We hang out. <laughs> Fushnikins, uh, organized UMCs. They did autograph signs. The UMCs? Shit, shout yeah. out to Hosh G yeah, too. Yeah. He's a Come on, he's, Hosh. Uh, he's Breaking Records Radio alumni as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, so a lot of them came through the store, did autograph sign-in. Um, back then, it was, the place to be was 100 Miles. Yeah. Right? It was, like, if you're in the music business, like, all the the labels were, were connected with us. And they're like, okay, this guy's coming to town, and we're going to bring him to your store at this time. And, <laughs> yeah, it was... It was Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So there was like there was some actual organization. Oh yeah, there. oh yeah. There was a lot of organization, a lot of. Um, sometimes they just pop up. Yeah. Right. And we're like, oh man, Wu Tang's here. The whole like, <laughs> so we're like, okay, yeah. So that it was it was it was like that. Not all the time was it. Uh, planned or or scheduled. Sometimes you just like, okay, he's he's here now. <laughs> right. You know, we just had to deal with it as as we saw the artists come in, right? So some of it, like I said, the labels would uh, have us in, in tune with. I remember Domino coming. Oh, shit, Yeah, eh? Domino, yeah, he was... Montel Jordan, so a lot of... Montel even, Jordan. Yeah, a lot, 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 lot of the... And even the promoters. The promoters would bring them by the store just to let people know that the artists were were, were in town and they came Kind to, of build up uh, yeah, the hype and shit. Yeah, like, they, they're at 100 miles. Yeah. <laughs> so, Back then, it was like, the city. Yeah, yeah, everybody would know that, you know, hey, this show is going on, you know what I mean? Because they were at 100 miles, and or they're wearing 100 miles, or they're wearing, you know, the other brand. Like, so it, it was it was really cool back then, you know what I mean? In, in the sense of how the city was so uh, electric when it came to the music, and the, the scene was so much um, growing. Like, it was like a pulsating part of downtown core of the city was hip hop and you know the radio stations the urban radio stations or the college sorry college radio stations were just uh unique so you didn't hear it on the commercial radios yeah right and the only time you would hear it is when you know that that group broke uh broke through right and got what we call commercial yeah right like run dmc was one of the first groups to actually go commercial, commercial radio then uh Fresh Prince went commercial, you know, and sometimes we, 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 you know, as hip hop listeners, you wonder why some of the groups that you love so much didn't go commercial. Yeah. But then, you know, it's also the labels and, and everything else, right? That goes with it and yeah. marketing and you name it. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy times. So like, and, and, and I'd actually, so I want to get into some of those actual stories, like even just specific situations. But first, I just kind of want to ask, like, when you first started the brand, um, like, what was it like, like before, like, how did you first, like, you know, like the, like the above the rim thing and stuff, did it, like, how did all that stuff happen? Was that before 
Was that in the early stages? Because that's like 92, 93, right? Like, it seems like yeah. almost right after you started your brand, damn near, you had yeah, Pac like, wearing it. Like, what happened <laughs> like how, was, did, how did that happen so what, quickly? What, what, what happened was, to be honest with you, we opened up April 30th, 1992, and I remember opening up, it was like lights, camera, action for us. And, it's, and ever since, it's been that way, right? Where the TVs, the radio state, everybody was there with the mic, you know, interviewing us and interviewing me and asking me, you know, like, what's it like being this person? And I'm like, shit, I don't know, because <laughs> I just started, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, it, it was, it, it, it blew up from the very conception of it. It, 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 it outgrew me years ago. And um, as being part of the brand, you know, we didn't foresee 30 years later. We just were doing it because this was the way to express ourselves in a different way than everybody else was doing, right? And it was something that I was passionate to because I felt that culturally there was not a lot of representation of designers that represented us from a cultural standpoint and from a, a fashion standpoint. And I just kind of wanted to you know, put my big mouth in it and say, yeah, this is what we can do. And then, you know, the artists is, with the very first group was Kid and Play. Really? Eh? Yeah, Kid and Play. And um, I remember showing them, like, my first design, like, which is the man on the world. Where where, where can I find that? It's on my art. Right here. The original, the OG yeah, logo. Yeah, this is the OG logo. So... When they saw it, I remember they, they, they did a long pause and looked at the gear for at least five minutes or so. And then they turned to me and go, this is you? And I'm like, I was nervous and like, yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, this is the make, or, make it or break it moment kind of. And how this thing, bless you, how, how this thing, you know, evolved. And they said, we love it. And next thing you know... You know, I'm talking to them on the phone on a regular basis, they're, and they're like, yo, we're going to help you. And, you know, so from there, I kind of got, I, I believe, introduced to Uptown Records from... Oh, okay. Uptown Play. Like, somehow, like, they were movie stars at the time. Like, and just to get them, you know, interested in my stuff was like, you know, something out of a movie to me. Yeah. Right? And... Next thing you know, I, I'm, I'm dealing with Andre Harrell and Uptown Records and, you know, like Father MC, you name it, Joe, like whoever was on the on the label. And then it was just like, I remember going to The Source or The Source doing a feature on us, The Source magazine. And then after that, it was just like everybody in there, like you, you name it, as they came to the city, we kind of formed the 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 allegiance i remember when like black moon buckshot and them came the first time they came the city kind of didn't embrace them the way that uh you know toronto toronto screwface capital so basically we showed them love and then next thing you know we're in their music video oh and, shit. and then then who got the props i believe it was right or enter the stage one of the two songs right and uh shout out to buck and Five foot evil D, you know what I'm saying, my peeps, right? Smith and Weston, and uh, basically, next thing you know, like the Brooklyn kids are are wearing us, and you know, all over Brooklyn and Manhattan, you know, in in five five soul, triple five soul, Carmela, um, at the time was the owner of triple five soul, that brand, yep. and then she started carrying us, and then. Russell Simmons started getting some of us. Spike Lee started getting some of us, and it, it just grew organically. Like the the brand and the, the artists and everything else that has come with with the brand. You know what I'm saying? So that's it, incredible. It, yeah, it's it's just sometimes I don't even know how to explain it. it just, <laughs> just one thing led to the next yeah, thing, to which the next led thing. to the next thing. And that was hip hop back then. It was yeah. like 
that real like the, you know in a cipher so it was more real and everybody was connecting and and it, and it was just building and everything was word of mouth yeah, right like like exactly. dopeness spoke for itself yes yes if your shit wasn't dope nobody <laughs> was talking about your right, shit right right and all of a sudden everybody was talking about our brand and like you know a lot of times when we're in here in, in toronto and we're hearing like yo new york everybody's talking about 100 miles and like you know and it's it was like is this for real <laughs> you know what i mean and you know and artists are telling us like you know and wanting our stuff yeah you know it was like wow like this is toronto you know what i mean and so that was kind of our my goal was to put the city on the map right like i wanted people to know that hey Toronto got a hip hop scene. Toronto got black people. Toronto, it's not just igloos up here. Like they yeah. were just so misinformed about the way that uh, Americans, Canada was. yeah, that Canada was, was. Yeah. yeah, right. So they're like always ask me, yo, you up in the cold? And then I'm like, <laughs> my G, you gotta come down here and and and, and check us out. Weather-wise, Toronto is basically the same as New York. Yeah, and but they were just so <laughs> oblivious to like how we were living, so. We gave them a reason to come to Toronto. Yeah. Right? I remember a lot of cats would drive hours just to come to Toronto, just to come and see 100 miles. So it was it was something that um, we wanted New York to know, and that is that we could go, you know, we could be just as, as, as nice in yeah. terms of fashion as they could be. And I, I think we've proven that now, you know, 30 years later. <laughs> Once again, a legacy that, you know, not many people just in hip hop fashion at all, you know what I mean? Especially like keeping it, because that's the other thing that I think, uh, you know, y you've kept the brand yourself the whole time. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm sure yeah. there's been times where you could have sold it to oh, somebody and maybe. they would have just turned your shit into Exco or, yeah. or Echo, you know what I mean? And just yeah. mass reproduced shit and, the, you we, know what I mean? And We didn't kinda, want it for the, the... You always kept the integrity of the brand to yeah. your own, you know what I mean? And kept yeah. like the direction to yourself and that's yes. like... And that goes a long way because a lot of people, it's yeah, a lot of people the, don't. The hold, love. Yeah, a lot of people don't hold artistic integrity to anything they do for that it's, long. It's 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 the love. I I think the customer base, the client base that we have, has expressed so much love, and uh, it's like a unity. It's like a community at the same time too, or the world now. And we're just doing this for. All those people from 30 years that have been rocking with us till now. Yeah. And, then, and then all the new people that are coming on to our brand. So to see, like, you know, a lot of our clients, their kids are wearing our stuff now. Right? Even your daughter got something yeah. the other day. That's, like, something so humbling for for me as the, the founder of this brand to see, you know, young kids are going to grow up you know, knowing of 100 miles and appreciate and, it, yeah. yeah, and know that it was from Toronto and they were wearing something from Toronto from, they were from very young till, you know, if they, you know, we last that next 30 years and, you know, keep them in tune with, with, with our brand, you know, so that's, I think is one of the coolest things. See that, and that's a cool thing too, right? That I never even really would have thought to look at because you guys have so many accolades of just like <laughs> hip hop royalty rocking your stuff. You almost lose sight to like the fact that like yeah, you've probably seen people who've been rocking with you thirty years. Their yeah. kids, their kids, and their kids, <laughs> kids have now grown up rocking hundred miles. Yeah, yeah. You see the generation. Yeah, so it's like it's got yeah, like a family yeah, brand element yeah, to it too. Yes, right? that's the craziest part of our brand is the see the evolution of it and you know see the different generations like even seniors wearing our clothing you know what i mean and and feeling very much part of our 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 brand and you know age is there's no factor here yeah you know what i mean like anywhere from newborn to uh, 100 you know what i mean or yeah. more wearing our, our 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 gear and that's how we've always wanted it you know what i mean so I, i'm i'm very much uh grateful for you know having these opportunities to uh, been able to last this long and the thing is you guys do have something that can appeal to anybody yeah you know literally like there's something like for everybody. any person who's kind of into anything could find something to be like yo that's like actually yeah that's like, you know yeah. what i mean yeah 
Yeah, like the people now, since we've opened up this new location that's been purchasing it, whole new demographics to us. And we're like, yeah, this is this is like what we're always been about, and that's to break ground, you know, um, open up new avenues, open up new doors, open up new clientele. You know what I mean? We never wanted to stay in the hip hop arena. We've always wanted to be in the fashion arena. Yeah. The, the, the urban arena, you know what I mean? We've always <clears throat> accept the labels that everybody is going to give us, but we know that at the end of it, we're just really a fashion brand, a very high-end, high-quality-driven fashion brand. That's, yeah. that's really where um, our mission or our, our, our goal or our objective is all the time. And everything is high-quality, too. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Very high quality. I've, anything I've ever owned 100 miles is like, it holds up. Yeah, thank it you. It holds up. Appreciate it. And it's, you know, um, I want to just take the camera around. Honestly, <laughs> check all this. Maybe I want when we're done, yeah. actually. I can cut that out yeah. even. But, um, so, like, one thing I do want to ask about, too, I mean, obviously, like, we've talked about the Tupac thing to a degree, mm -hmm. um, but I'm more interested in almost, like, you know, in some of those stories of like people coming through the store, okay. like there's got to be some crazy stories from that. That uh, yeah, era. Uh, I think Biggie. Like Biggie's, that would be Biggie, wild. Biggie, Biggie, Biggie's one of the craziest stories because back then, uh, famous words of Director X, Toronto was based on the fashion back then, so it wasn't about uh, the music. It was about the clothing companies, and so. Ourselves and another brand, we we were rivals. <laughs> the best way, I, I, or competition. Yeah. And it was always competitive for the, the, the artists, right? So Biggie coming to town, the, they had their record label friend chaperoning Biggie around. And they did not want Biggie to come to 100 miles. So Biggie left them and found my store on his own. And so when he came now, he goes, yeah, this guy didn't want to take me to your store. <laughs> <laughs> He's on some sucker shit. <laughs> and I'm like, where? Oh, gee, I found you, though. I found you. <laughs> right? So I just remember little C's like about this big running up. Yo, what's up, G? And then he showed me love. And um, at the time... There's some uh, female clients in my stores, female customers, and I remember the girl going, oh my God, Biggie, and faints. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally faints in my store, like, on the ground. They were like, yo, what the, you know what I mean? Like, like throw some water, like, you know, <laughs> rekindle her, and then Big, Biggie's like, yo, you got any new ports? And I'm like, nah, man, we, we hear some weed. So he's like, yeah, man, this man didn't want to take me to your store, and... Yo, everybody, I'm a big fan of your brand. And at the time, I remember I was nervous because Pac had just worn us above the rim or or he knew about it. Yeah. And, and I was like, man, I think Biggie's going to want to beat me up because, you know, this big oh, East Coast, West Coast thing is going was, on. That was going on at the yeah, time. Holy yeah, shit. Right at the time. And we had Pac now wearing our stuff and they just had a fallout and... And Biggie was like, nah, G, come on, man. It's all love. And and show me pure love. I had his number. I used to call him all the time. Like, yo, Big. You know what I mean? Because he was what we call real. Yeah. And back then, it was just a lot more realer than it is now when it came to, comes to artists. And the artists used to connect, you know what I mean? When they, like, or check in. Yeah. When they came to, to the city with us. And Biggie had to make sure that when he came to Toronto, he checked in with 100 miles because he was a fan of us. And he's the reason that I think we've gone 30 years because of just that conversation we had and that moment in time that we shared and how much influence we... we, we like, I was like, man, you... you you're big, like you're Biggie. <laughs> you're Biggie. Yeah, and like and, and like how much I love your music. Like like I, I like I can't believe I'm you're in my store. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he signed my wall. Oh, Back man. then we had an autograph wall, so he signed yo notorious B. I. G. 
100 miles for life and you know it, it it was an amazing time and then seeing them like you know wear us in 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 the show that night it was a crazy show you know it just solidified things that you know he was a real one and you know god rest his soul all the time because you know we've been able to as a brand represent him and Pac and fife all the people that guru all the people big l we've lost big l even rocked yeah, it Holy yeah shit. yeah so all the people we've lost during our time in existence we've been able as a brand to represent them so as much as it's everyone's give it to me we still give it back to the culture yeah you know what i'm saying and 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 let people know that through our brand those people are still living and still going and 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 that same realness is still here with us yeah you know what i'm saying so that, that's how it is yeah biggie like that's yeah that's just one story <laughs> then, exactly we're and odb is another right? just like... keith murray's another like there's there's so many stories like me and Oh man, there's so many stories. <laughs> Did ODB do anything wild? At yeah, the yeah. I remember the very first time I met him. <laughs> Back then, you know, people were in fronts, but not like, like the fronts, like how with fangs and stuff. And I remember him coming up to me and here. His hair was wild, and he had these 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 fangs, you know, um, going like in his mouth and opening up like he was gonna bite me or something i was like yo like what the f you know what i mean he's like yo g and he gave me a hug like so he scared the shit out of me because i'm like this guy looks you know what i mean yeah but out of all of woo he was the closest to me and always would check for me when he came to the city and always would ask me you okay g you think all right and like a lot of times artists back then they all they cared about was getting gear from us yeah and there was only a few that really took that time to uh, like actually connect with connect you on a personal us. level yeah and that was biggie that was odb right um eric and paris for sure they have always connected with me and 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 red man like so there's there's there's, there's, there's certain artists that we we just connect with differently black moon buckshot you know we connect with and and it's just like real realness you know what i mean it's crazy to think all the like moments of hip-hop that you guys are a part of you know what i mean like <laughs> you think about everything from above the rim like that biggie show that happened in toronto that was the only time you performed here right yep and it was like this wild ass show yeah. that's like it it's a historic was. moment you know it's before my time but I've, yeah. I've heard everybody from the like you know the generation above me talk about how fucking crazy the show was and mm -hmm. there's that like infamous footage of him and there's like 20 people like all yeah, like you yeah. know like he's like rapping basically in the yeah. middle of like just a swarm yeah. of people yeah. like that's how yeah. packed this place was yep and there's like secure trying to like push like people back <laughs> and shit and it's it was a crazy time back then and and he's got the 100 miles to right? yep. yeah yep yep I, I i like i said i'm very grateful to to the father above like like the the creators really manifested all of this i'm just a vessel in which he's chosen to have been able to bring out his you know his love and kindness and and his humility onto the world so this is this brand is like i always say a lot deeper and bigger than anything i've ever envisioned you know what i mean in terms of like now looking at the legacy that we've created you know and the names that we can you know associate with our brand is just you know something that like i'm still you know 30 years later still pinching myself yeah and saying yo is it this for real <laughs> you know you know like now we got like drake and you know that's that's even something crazy again on it's all on its own and that's something you know obviously i i, I will want to you know touch on as well yeah. but you know like just to like I guess to kind of even just get inside your mind, like talking about that time and like, you know, did you like ever, even when things started picking up fast and stuff, were you like, did you ever think this was going to be 30 years later and you're still like, even when things were at like, you know, everybody no. and the pulse was heavy and stuff or like. No, I, I was, I remember me so much, I was fighting, I had a complex problem. I wanted to be normal and feel that I could be normal. But having the brand that I had and everybody like 
seeing everything that was happening in the city, it, it, it was like kind of like I was somewhat of a target or um, just an object, right, for, for people to study, you know what I mean? And so I had a complex of trying to fit in back then, but knowing that I couldn't fit in because of this, yeah. you know what I mean? And so for the first part of my career, I was trying to be more, trying to be cool and being accepted. And then I went through a stage of uh, losing my father that I went through depression, whereas I didn't really, I was still making clothes, but I wasn't making it with a, I was more depressed because losing my dad and they, like that was my inspiration. And, and then, you know, him speaking to me and coming to me through, you know, his, his many ways of talking to me and showing me that, you know, to continue the path and to stay strong and, you know, picked it back up, you know, and and we went full full 100, as we call it. And ever since we've kept it 100, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's been a journey. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, though. And like even when you speak, sorry to hear about your dad as well. It's all good. Oh, um, it's resting. I, yeah, I lost my mom last year. Condolences. Fucking, yeah, you know it's one of those things, right? Like I guess uh, it's one of those things where it never you never it never really feels normal, but you just kind of it feels more real every yeah, day. Yeah, every day feels more real. Like with all the people that we've lost or I've lost along the way, it's just made it more humbling. Yeah, and and made it more um, inspiring for us as a brand to express love with the time that we have because you never know when your time will be you know called so it's just made us more uh in tune with with the culture and try to stay in tune with ourselves and and you know show people that it's it's all love yeah you know what i mean and um and man, man i could talk I could talk just the stories alone for hours, but I yeah. mean, I want I want to focus on the brand part. So like, kind of when you kicked it back into gear, I'm not you know I'm not sure exactly what years are and stuff like that. But um, we never I never stopped. Yeah, but you, it, it, but we weren't in the public eye. Yeah. So when you're not in the public eye, it's like, it's like oh you're not he's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but meanwhile, like for us as a brand. We've always been so busy with the behind the scenes. Like there's so much things in being 100 miles. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we we're, were still dealing with artists, still making clothes, dealing with production, like in production houses. So throughout 30 years, that's what I've done. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's never been a like pause. You know what I mean? It's always been consistent, just that for us as a brand, we got back into the public eye, I'd say about uh, 10, 10 years ago, I'd say 10, like like doing shows and contests and, and then um, lots of festivals and now retail store. Now you got a store. <laughs> yeah, now that's, retail store. That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Um, and you actually said something that I didn't even really... You know, that I think a lot of people will never really think about when it comes to running a clothing brand. But it's like, because earlier talking about, like, you know, dealing with labels and stuff, too. It's like, that's all behind the scenes stuff. You know what I mean? Like, sure, some of that stuff comes to the public eye when they see people wear, maybe wearing it or whatever. But it kind of just gives a nod to, like, how much work you're doing behind the scenes with yeah. crap orders for labels, stuff like that, <laughs> and then, like, movies. And then, you know yeah, what I mean? So it's yeah. like... You could consistently run a brand behind the scenes oh, yeah. for years, right? Oh, yeah. Not be in the public Not eye. Not be in the public eye. Yeah. And that's what we were doing. We were running the brand and like, we were letting people think what they wanted to think. But those that knew what was going on is like, shit, he's just as busy as he was with with, with having the store. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And even like, and that's what people don't understand. Even now, having this store, we're just as busy, like doing our online orders to production to designers to marketing like so there's so much different aspects now to our brand and to what we're, what we're doing that it, it it's never ending you know what i mean it's never ever ending for us and what inspires you like 30 years later to continue like you know 
designing and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, to not right. get worn out, and, like, you're showing me some stuff that you had just, like, done up today, and you're, like, you know, and just, like, the uh, the relevancy of the clothing, you know what I mean? Like, you brought back, like, the, the vintage, you know, pod mm -hmm. hoodie, uh, you know, yeah. like, the one Drake yeah. wore and stuff, and, but... You're always constantly, you know, like every time I come in here or sit, you know, before if I'd see you at a pop up or a festival or something, I'd be like, yo, this shit is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, you'd always have some new stuff that looked crazy, you yeah. know what I mean? And then, like, it's just, like, how do you keep that motivation after 30 years and just continue to innovate the brand? You know what I mean? I, I think always it's from a spiritual. I always ask the Father above to give me the health and strength. Every single day of my life, I, I give you know, the creator, his, his dues. And, and then from there, it's the people. It's always the people like now for us, it's worldwide. So we never even envisioned that to, you know, be in Germany and Australia and Netherlands and, uh, Amsterdam, France and Belgium, like all these places, Scotland, Ireland, like, you know, that UK, all of USA, Canada, you know, that are, you know, buying our stuff, we didn't see this 30 years later. So I think now knowing that, wow, we have the world now, you know, as opposed to just having Toronto, you know, it, it that's kind of something surreal it, uh, on its own that keeps me going or keeps the brand going, right, is one, that spiritual connection and two, knowing that the, the world's your oyster and you know or the world is yours and so we're, we're just trying to take what you know what's ours and, <laughs> and just keep running with it and I think a lot of inspiration is the people it's always the people so that's what's inspired me to go because a lot of times if it was up to me I'd have stopped but everybody like yourself and anybody that gives me inspiring words or even criticism it keeps me going right it keeps like keeps me grounded right um so i've learned not to take the ego into it take the ego out of the equation and yeah that's uh, that's a big and, thing and just stay real to yourself and be true to your family you know and my family consists of the people that i surround myself with not just my immediate family but the everyday people that come and wear my brand i consider them my family yeah right so it, it's just having that bond and that connection that is the most um surreal thing to me that keeps me driven and keeps me going and then like i said before losing some of the artists and you know my dad and my grandmother people that have been so influential to me has inspired me to to represent them through the brand so those are the things that keep me going and it's like and yeah and you know but even just to keep going but it's like it's just always innovating you know what i mean yeah. which is the impressive part it's like it, but that's i love the inspiration. i love i love clothes and i love when people get it they're like oh this brand is dope or we're like okay <laughs> i think that and and then we we just try to make sure that we're on our vibe but we're gonna come with something hard and we've been in the last through the pandemic we just got like really really serious with it oh yeah just so you built up a, like a big yeah like we, oh different... yeah oh yeah like we our designs are like we got designs for like 20 30 years right now <laughs> crazy like it's endless and so we tell everybody like if you if you want to come into this game you know, just look out for us because you're going to hear about us or yeah. somebody's going to mention our name to you. You know what I mean? And it's not in any arrogant way or any uh, way to intimidate anybody. It's just who we are and what we do. And we take the game pretty seriously. And we're, we're, we're here to, uh, you know, keep doing what we do. Man. And um, so there's, there's two more things I do want to ask before we wrap it up. I mean, yeah. one is the obvious but um before we get to the drake thing <laughs> i want to i want to keep it because this is more in lieu of what we're actually talking about but um so i guess the 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 main thing the main question is you now open the storefront 
30 years later, 30 year anniversary is very symbolic. Was this a plan that you had or did this just like, what, what actually inspired you to, on the 30th year, come back and open up a storefront? Pandemic. Yeah? <laughs> the pandemic. Um, the fact that we felt that uh, it was just the right time. It was just the right time for us to come back to, to where, where we never left. And that's the city. You know what I mean? And, and giving the city what they've asked us for that we didn't really want to do. And that was giving them back an actual store. So the city was asking us for the longest time, well, are you guys ever going to open again? And we're like, no, no, we're going to just stay online and do a couple shows here and there, a couple festivals. And, you know, the pandemic drove us into, you know, seeing that, hey, with the reopening of the city, why not reopen 100 Miles? You know what I mean? And, and, you know, give people, you know, a bit of what they ask for. And so far it's been it's been unreal because now we're getting new and uh, existing clients to, to come through our store. And, you know, like, it, it, it's something that, you know, I'm seeing, like, a 75-year-old woman today uh, across the street wearing my track bottoms and <laughs> waving to me, you know, like, old, and walking her dog, you know. It's like, yo, this is crazy, you know what I mean? So, you know, I I, I am just so uh, humbled to, to, to know that, you know, 30 years later, we've, we've been able to, you know, launch another store. Um, mind you, we did this all in a month. <laughs> right? <laughs> we did this all in a month, in which I tell everybody, don't ever do this, right? Because, you know, we thought... Because 30 years ago, we, we did it in a month or like a little bit of time. But this was a little bit more trickier than we, we uh, had um, estimated. And so, you know, I, I tell anybody, if you're going to ever open up a store, give yourself a bit of time. <laughs> Don't be like 100 miles and go in it. A like, month. Yeah. It, That's crazy. Yeah, we did it all in a month. And so, you know, shout outs to the team, T Dot in the front, Tyrone, shout out to Christine, Brian, um, and all our all our customers, you know, all our clients. I hate seeing customers because it seems so soulless. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I feel and, you. you know, our, our clients, I love calling them our family, all our family for for repping us and, and supporting us over our, our uh, three decades now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's something i never would have thought <laughs> it's inspiring though man you know it, it, it truly is it's inspiring that you can like even for like what i do you know what i mean it's inspiring knowing that you can come you can build something in the city you can stay in the city yeah. you can create something through mm -hmm. just integrity and word of mouth and a resume of greatness and and create longevity you yeah. know what i mean yeah. like you don't you know, everybody, I think, a lot of times gets caught up in, like, the glamour and the glitz and wants to be the biggest thing popping and this and that. <laughs> and, like, ne a lot of people lose sight of the integrity of kind of what makes right. whatever they do so great, so great. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I guess, like, you know, even going back to what you are saying earlier, but, you know, certain rap you consider, you know, became commercial. You know what I mean? It's like everybody it's almost wants that, that Yeah, the break, commercial, You know yeah. what I mean? But a lot of people, in, in, in the pursuit of it, lose the integrity of what makes... But they I, do so great in the first place, you know. I think what it is for us is we've always had this thing of underground, right? Like, we, we represent the underground. And what, what, when we say the underground, we mean street level, right? And I think we, if we always stay street level, even if we go commercial, we'll always still have the streets. Yeah. Right? And a lot of people want to go commercial and never had streets. And so when they, when they fall, they... they there ain't nowhere for them to go because they ain't from the street level. Yeah. So for us, we we always know that there's growth, but we ma we maintain the street level or the underground and or the the pulsing beat of fashion. Yeah. We're we're the ones that all those other guys are trying to be like, <laughs> right? Thirty years later, like we see so much things that we've already created that people are acting like they just created and. Some of the funniest ones for us is seeing all these corporate companies now have pictures of Pac and Biggie on their their clothing, 
right? And we're the actual brands that those guys were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you guys are missing the mark. Yeah. Like, whereas you should be hollering at us, right? So, it, it, and, you know, some of these youth that are wearing it, we're like, you guys need to do a little bit more history, especially when you're wearing it in the city. That yeah. You're this city. And know that, you know, we are one of those pioneering brands that these guys were aspiring to want to wear. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this is really what you should be wearing more than that would be more symbolic than a shirt that just has a face on it that a corporate guys getting their residuals from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So And actually just a random question too. Um have you ever like done up shirts with some of the other images of other people who've worn it? Like that'd be like such a sick like little just like, you know, yeah. limited edition like no. line to do like the no. vintage hip hop or something like no, we've we have designs. Yeah, <laughs> just that never never pulled the trigger. Yeah, we on. haven't we haven't pulled the trigger yet. Like it, everything for us is strategic. Yeah, you know, and um, right now we we have so much new stuff that we've worked on that I I feel is really hot that I wanna I wanna push out and then hopefully when there's an anniversary or something symbolic. We'll launch I'm gonna make it. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll launch it. Just a few years ago on uh, Pac's birthday or or on his memorial, we launched the the above the rim shirt, right? Like with him wearing our a capture of him wearing our our hoodie from the movie. So we we have launched one. Yeah. Right. Recently, right, and it's 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 done well. You know what I mean? But we we still. A further marketing and, and 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 so forth to do on it but you know look out for the new shit <laughs> okay. well, i'm excited and the other thing about having a store i did want to say as well too is it just makes it so much like i hate trying to shop online you know what i mean yeah and even at festivals and stuff is i always love to see you there you know what i mean and chop yeah. it up and see what you had out what the new stuff was but you can't possibly show every like even yeah. near everything yeah. you have to offer right? never never you, even right now you probably don't have everything that you have to sell out on the floor you just have to make choices of yeah what. like and now we're doing it re um uh, how i feel and 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 the season yeah you know what i mean and then uh our color selections and you, you know it, it, everything is just and then the people yeah right so it's 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 kind of like so much different mixtures all in one to to kind of get us in the right direction or in the, in in the the horizon that is 100 miles and that that's why I think we've been able to to last as long is because of our our consumer base is is so in tune with us like they're, it's like they're part of us yeah and we hear everything like and kind of see everything and try to keep it um towards you know our end the end customer or the end client and are you gonna do festivals or anything anymore yeah, just, yeah? yeah you yeah. still are yeah yeah you're yeah, crazy yeah, 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 yeah. of course like you're a you workaholic got, though, yeah right? yeah like we very very exhausted tell you the truth but you know, it's 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 the energy off of the, the the city and the people and the world now, right? So, it's what they call like a new launch or a new phase for us as a brand having back our retail store. And we said that if we ever gonna do something, we're gonna do it right. And this this time, like we're just doing doing it like right. Like I love the the look of the store. I love the feel of the store. We still got a lot of work to do, but. The look in the field because each thing is kind of sectioned off. Like we got the women's section, we got the kids section, hat section, the accessories at top, and in 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 the in the display case, and then we got the, the the unisex gear. Like so, I think the store flows. I think it's fly, um, and we're just unique because we're 100 miles. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Oh my man! Well, you know, before um, before I end it, you know, we gotta we have to ask the question. It's the question that obviously asked yeah. and asked. And um, I mean, we've talked about it before, so I already know the story. But the, you know, the people listening, watching, do not. So how did the, how in the hell did um, first off how did the Drake thing kind of happen? Was it something that was kind of conscribed, or did you just yeah. get like texts on your phone one day that was like, hey, mm -hmm. hey, turn on TV? Yeah. Or were you watching the game and you just seen it? No, yourself? I was sleeping. Really, eh? I was sleeping. 
And what happened was, I'd say it was a Tuesday. Tuesday, like, and I don't sleep because I'm always checking online. And I remember seeing a big order come in. And I'm like, oh, somebody ordered, like, a few hoodies, right? <laughs> and, uh, and then um, saying to my, 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 my other half, I was saying to her, like, um, yeah, we just got a big order. And then I remember, like, a few hours later in the middle of the night, they're like, hey, um, we're Drake's people. Or, and we're wondering uh, if you could deliver this to this place at this time. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. They're saying they're Drake's people. I don't care. They, they ordered it online. Yeah. And next thing you know, I deliver it. I deliver it the next day. I'm like, yeah, I, you know, grab these two pieces, get it to them. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. I forgot about it because it's like on to the next order. And I remember it was a game night. I was nervous. So when I'm nervous, I don't like to watch the game. Right. Like I'm like, I feel like I want to jinx them. <laughs> right. So I was, I wasn't even watching. I was, I, I, I fell asleep and I just remember my phone ringing like profusely. And the first person calls in when I'm sleeping, I don't want nobody to wake me up. So I, I, I ignore that one. And then I see them call it, keep calling. Then I see someone else calling. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing my like my website kinda get some orders and stuff. Like so they're like I remember finally I think it was Ryan Mac or Chino, my boys, and they're like, Yo G, are you watching the game? And I'm like, No. They go, put it on the game. Put it on the game. So when I put it on the game, I remember my mouth kind of, or the feeling I was like, yo, this feel like above the rim again. Like it just felt like Pac, like, yeah, where it seen Drake wear it, and like my phone wouldn't stop ringing. Then all of a sudden, like, like orders are just like flying through the roof, um, and just. I remember just saying, you know, through all of it, stay humble. And um, God works in mysterious ways and praise, all praises to Drake for wearing us. You know what I mean? Like city on the city. Like it was a lot of people thought it was Drake's trying to be Tupac or no, he was showing love to the the city and I guess giving us our, our homage. Yeah. You know I mean, or our flowers. You know what I'm well, saying? exactly. Give me yeah. your flowers, and it's a nod to the the above the rim thing yeah. too, right? Like yeah. the game birdie. It's like it's like, it's actually like a very like um, iconic moment. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like very like for for people who get it, it's like very like tongue in cheek and like very um, you know what I mean? Like yeah. um, very well thought out, mo like yeah. very um, method like methodical, yeah. really, yeah. right? Like and and um and a, and a way to give flowers to a brand who's been doing this you know what yeah. i mean and like and it's still doing it and we you still history. produce those hoodies because yeah. you know like people want that hoodie like that was a historical moment for our city yeah and to be attached to that is something like people don't really see or understand like the Raptors won. Yeah. <laughs> and they won it with him wearing our hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We made history. And to me, that alone speaks like of how this brand is so unique, you know, like and it's 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 grown bigger than anything I've ever envisioned in my entire life of owning. Yeah. <laughs> or even making, you know, or founding. So you know, I'm I'm more like I said, just um, grateful for everybody that has come into my life and 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 made me feel you know what I'm doing is for a meaning and a purpose. So I'm I'm, I'm blessed. Oh and, man. Yeah. Well, you know, Gary, thank you for your time, man. Thank I you, appreciate man. it. Um, you know, I I love to be able to do it again sometime too like there's yeah, so man. much history there's more to uncover but you know like of course anytime just, you know even what we covered right there is great and what i want to do is encompass you know beginning to kind of where we're at now and i mean i guess one thing i would say too is like you know um but you take me as someone who wouldn't even want to say it anyways but i, I would say what do you have planned for the future be what do i have planned for the future i just think coming out with the dopest clothes um 
always like improving myself and the craft, staying focused and real to the culture. And when I say to the culture, it's not just the black culture, but the urban culture, the, the, what real hip hop was about, what, what it was to be um, a b-boy, you know what I mean, or, or a tag artist, uh, you know, it, 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 or a break dancer. It was, it was about trying to be your best yeah. and, 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 and be part, right? So as much as, you know, we're representing, we're still part of the culture, and that's what a lot of people don't understand, you know what I mean? You have to be part of it to, to be able to speak of it, you know what I mean? And we don't want all the titles that we get, like... Um, pioneering and stuff like that because that makes us feel old <laughs> you know what I'm saying so we don't want to feel old but we, we, we do appreciate like iconic and legendary and you know um, Toronto's first you know and that's that's who we are and you know I just want to just stay motivated and stay humble you know what I mean and, and, and stay true to the to the creator above you know what I mean because I think that like that's where my energy comes from to keep doing this thing. Yeah, is is always him. Because <laughs> it was me. I, I'm I'm done a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, you know I'm excited to see what the future holds. I'm really excited you got a store again. You know, and uh, yeah. and, and I'm really happy to live up the street from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, hey, man. man. But thank you for your time, man. Oh, I appreciate you. it. Plug the address for him one time. Two three five nine Queen Street East. Hey. In the beaches, you know what I'm saying? Toronto, you know what I'm saying? 2359 Queen Street East, right? This is the city, so we represent the six all day. Keep it 100. Word up.